Good afternoon. I am Kausal Pati. I head the marketing for Micro Focus in India. It's a pleasure to welcome you all today for this interesting session that we have. We have with us uh, distinguished IT leaders from the leading public sector units in India, where we'll have some exciting discussion on the topic of, uh, you know, uh, 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 smart IT for digital PSUs. The whole idea for us to uh, come here together uh, is to share thoughts and uh, learn from each other. I thank OSH to partner with us. Uh, and I will now invite uh, Kapil Dev Singh, who is the CEO of uh, OSH. Uh, Kapil will talk to us more on the topic and he will be moderate the discussion. Uh, Kapil, thank you very much for uh, putting on the session for us, putting it together. Uh, warm welcome to you. Uh, and thank you for partnering with Microfocus. Uh, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Tostob. Uh, that was really short and sweet. Uh, uh, so a very good afternoon, uh, friends. Uh, we also have Mr. Devnath uh, from Chris uh, who has joined in. So uh, we have the full house of uh, the panelists for this round table. Uh, I welcome you all uh, on behalf of Koyos Age and Microfocus. Uh, to this round table, very interesting round table on smart IT for digital PSU. Now, before I uh, go to each one of you and uh, request you to share your perspectives from your organization's point of view, and generally from uh, smart IT for digital PSU point of view, let me give a small context uh, to this entire discussion. Uh, and then I will invite each one of you to give your opening remarks for approximately three minutes. And once done, then we'll get into uh, a Q and A or a informal uh, discussion mode. Uh, for your information, we're recording this conversation and we will be uh, using this uh, recording to cut small videos. We call them words of wisdom from the thought leaders. And we will share it with the larger community of PSU tech leaders so that they can benefit from your uh, thought leadership. Okay, so let me just set the context. Uh, the topic reads smart IT for digital PSU. And there are two concepts that I would like to clarify uh, in order to give you a con uh, perspective, uh, a context to base your uh, you know, thoughts upon. One is digital PSU. Now, what is a digital PSU? Now, PSU, public sector unit or a government uh, enterprise is like any other enterprise uh, with a basic difference. And the difference is that uh, PSUs represent uh, and handle uh, national resources. Hence, they have a greater responsibility in terms of using them effectively towards the purpose. And what is the purpose? The purpose is not just uh, making money out of the endeavor, but also serving the larger uh, social cause. And uh, that's the reason why when we speak of PSUs, we just don't speak of customers only, we speak of citizens. Uh, so a digital PSU is an endeavor of uh, the government enterprises and PSUs to exploit the emerging digital technologies in order to be more efficient because they handle resources that belongs to the nation. Uh, apart from efficiency, they also handle, uh, or, and many of them are so large that they are crown jewels of the country. So if anything happens to a power utility or a telecom utility, or uh, for, a, for, for that matter, uh, an oil company, uh, it means uh, there is a disruption that can be caused in the country. So there is an immense uh, requirement for uh, making them more, more secured. And of course, being since many of them operate uh, in domains where there are private players, they have to be very, very competitive. So digital PSU is, an, is, is, an, is a government enterprise that strives to serve uh, the, the, the citizens. And in order to uh, uh, do that, they exploit digital to become more competitive, uh, to become more efficient and re remain secured. Then comes the concept of smart IT. Now, smart IT is, is a new paradigm of IT, which can support uh, the digital endeavors that PSUs are undertaking today. And what uh, does this 
uh, smart IT represent. It essentially talks about scalability. Since the PSUs talk of immense scale, how can IT scale uh, up uh, as per the requirements? That becomes very, very important. Along with the scalability, it also is important to uh, be uh, modular and agile so that the scalability that doesn't become doesn't come at the cost of being agile and all uh, there is a greater focus on being automated and autonomous since we are talking of uh, complexity uh, in it and we are talking of scalability in it uh, it cannot be done uh, purely with human endeavors it has to be automated and be autonomous to a great extent so that's what smart IT represent. So there is a digital PSU and digital PSUs in order to uh, become uh, effective and efficient, they need smart IT uh, infrastructure and applications at the back end. Now with those few words, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, each one of you in turn so that you can uh, share your perspective on smart IT for digital PSU. Uh, my first speaker uh, today is Mr. Chandra Kishore Prashad, uh, who is an executive director with Railtel Corporation of India Limited. And if I understand correctly, he is based out of Hyderabad. So over to you, Mr. Prashad, uh, for sharing your initial uh, thoughts. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kapil Singh. Um, Happy to be part of this uh, roundtable discussion. Uh, PSUs, uh, when they have to serve large number of customers or a diverse uh, set of businesses, say it as a B2C or a citizens in our case, uh, or B2B, where we collaborate with different PSUs doing different projects, it is extremely important that we uh, become more innovative and uh, uh, agile in terms of and uh, the best way of doing it is to transform the business and go digital. So digital, uh, uh, going digital, the core what I, in my opinion is that we should go for cloudification of the infrastructure, go for modernization of the infrastructure, deploy the cloud layer and uh, it can be a model which can be on-prem basically PSUs uh, have been mostly uh, having their IT infrastructure on the premises and uh, some of the applications are on cloud definitely and uh, the migration for certain applications which are you can say non-critical or which uh, the government mandates that it can be basically put on cloud where uh, the privacy and other things content uh, especially in terms of security is not so critical can go to the public cloud and uh, other critical uh, uh, crown jewels can be in the on-prem. So uh, cloud becomes the central core because uh, when you have cloud, you get all the benefits of scalability. You get the benefit of elasticity. You get the benefit of doing a lot of POCs because sometimes you're not very sure how the thing pan out. And uh, as we know, a lot of IT projects was uh, gets delayed because of constant change uh, requirement coming in. Uh, so POCs really help uh, when you go small, do a POC, see that everything is fine and then you deploy for a larger uh, uh, audience a larger number of uh, uh, like for example the customers or the citizens as such uh, on the digital id uh, definitely uh, whatever we do should be it should be possible to uh, that it should be accessible through any device for example through mobile phones or laptop tablets uh, smart watch whatever to the extent possible because usually what happens when we develop something, we it's a, a web page or a web portal. Uh, the form factor is uh, for a desktop or a laptop. But on the mobile, if you see, uh, you find that the things are not properly getting displayed. So uh, it's also important that we should see that what are the devices through with the citizens or the people will be accessing your application. Uh, and uh, the third thing is the security, which is uh, should be designed the infrastructure or the application should be designed with security in mind. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, in the government, we right now, one thing which uh, 
we also aspire is that we should go for a devops culture because the way the uh, demand keeps coming and changing um, you want more functionality sometimes and becomes very difficult to adopt the conventional model uh, basically your waterfall model or those uh, software engineering practices so devops is something which uh, we are trying to implement and we have uh, slightly working on so I started working on that those directions uh, to actually get the uh, people with devop uh, and dev sec op uh, culture it's a culture it takes time so that is one area which we aspire uh, to do it in the future so the digital it or smart it is where you uh, facilitate all the uh, through technology uh, enable people to be more productive more efficient uh, more agile uh, work from anywhere I give them the freedom to do what they want at the same time uh, have all the security control so that your systems are uh, uh, have the availability or the business continuity what is required or expected out of those systems um, and uh, these are the certain things uh, modernizing the infrastructure the cloud infrastructure uh, devices which use the security layer so it's a uh, gamut of a uh, whole lot of uh, technologies which are to be managed at the same time and for that you require the the manpower the skill the skill set and there uh, also uh, it's actually important to risk keep reskilling the people so so that they can support the end users uh, in their endeavor to become more agile and more uh, productive Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prashad, for uh, sharing your initial uh, thoughts. And what I hear from what you said is that, uh, you know, unlike any other organization, the PSUs also need to become innovative, uh, customer centric, uh, uh, and embrace newer paradigms like DevOps and Devs, DevSecOps to be able to do that. And hence, uh, there is an increased focus on modernizing and cloudifying the uh, IT infrastructure and applications. So uh, thank you so much for those opening opening remarks. We'll we'll come back uh, when we do the uh, round of discussion uh, during the Q and A. Uh, Railways is a very very old organization which has uh, been a pioneer in IT uh, uh, operations or using IT for their informational uh, needs. So way back in I think 1964 and all before I was born. But uh, 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 what I find now is that uh, um, due to the uh, fast uh, changes in the ICT field and the startup culture, which has gone up uh, uh, quite a lot, uh, the government organizations are uh, now trying to catch up most of the time. Uh, we are uh, slow in uh, you know, recognizing the technology and their deployment and their uh, you know uh, changes and uh, as we all know that uh, it always needs a, a dynamic uh, culture to support it that means the uh, technology changes it's uh, uh, you know updates keep on changing or the practices like earlier we used to code in individual lines and uh, compilers and all those those things are gone now we have to do it in a much faster agile way or so called uh, devops way and to add to that now uh, the interconnected security uh, earlier it used to be the viruses uh, infecting the individual machines now we have all the interconnected machines and the uh, malware or the security issues also travel fast and wide. So we have to take care of those things as well. Uh, to be smart, in my opinion, an organization needs to have few things in place. Number one, uh, all the uh, business processes should be well-defined and they should be uh, customer focused or whatever their focus is. If it is customer, internal customer, external customer, but they should be well-defined. Then their criticality or their risks should also be well-known or well-defined. 
the management should be the board should be aware of what can go wrong and uh, uh, what are the alternatives which can recover the business third is uh, the visibility of those uh, you know uh, businesses or those assets all the time so this is the very uh, first uh, uh, you know requirement for having a digital uh, smartness is that you know what you are running where and then comes to that what you need to improve uh, whether you need to improve the customer service whether you need to improve the business resiliency or whether you need to improve the security because uh, you are a bank or you are a, a, a financial company etc etc because uh, today in a large interconnected system it is very difficult to uh, you know find out uh, quickly where the problem is and then the the problem goes into cascade effect and it uh, uh, becomes large in no time so you should be able to put both uh, process firewalls as well as the uh, technology firewalls so that your issues uh, in one part of the business they do not transmit to other part of the business because of the digital uh, interconnections which you have now so i will stop now here for the next mm, phase you are at mood yes 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 ah, yeah <laughs> the Sorry. usual problem so thank yeah. you mr devnath uh, this, this that was mr devnath uh, who is uh, from uh, chris ministry of railways and i i really liked what you said uh, especially the statement that today every it manager or it leader need to know what is running where i mean it's, it's such a complex world that if you don't have visibility of what is uh, running where you may soon lose sight and if it goes wrong then uh, it may go wrong big time so so thank you so much for sharing your initial thoughts uh, we'll come back so uh, i'll request if you, uh, please stay put and uh, we will uh, come back once we have the uh, round of discussion so with those uh, few words let me now invite uh, mr uh, asis das who is uh, from uh, iocl he mr das is general manager in uh, strategic info systems at iocl mr das over to you you are on mute sir okay okay sorry thank you mr singh uh, hello everyone uh, good good afternoon to everybody i am asish das uh, general manager strategic is from indian oil uh, first uh, thanks for inviting me and uh, i am happy to be here uh, for last two years uh, we have faced and still facing an unprecedented pandemic scenario the outbreak of covid 19 has uh, ravaged the world economy by bringing activity to a standstill the face uh, to face the crisis almost every resources were, were uh, diverted towards it and like the other sectors also uh, our sector that oil and gas sector was also affected social distancing and lockdown has uh, caused uh, productivity loss in our case also but the silver lining from the pandemic is that uh, mm, uh, it has given up a scope for digital transformation across business model in the year 2020 uh, 20 and 2021 many of the digital initiatives have been taken up by by uh, my company uh, by iocl and uh, this year uh, 2020 2021 uh, was declared as a year of digitalization uh, if we categorize our digital initiatives uh, there will be three buckets basically uh, first one is emerging technology we have contributed significantly during this pandemic towards emerging technology second one is high impact analytics and third one is cost tool uh, as emerging technology uh, this uh, augmented reality virtual reality mixed reality ai platforms rpa tools have been explored we purchased those technical platforms and uh, at the beginning we start exploring their features during this pandemic we started uh, we procured first the uh, tools emerging technology tools 
and then we started exploring the features what are the features what are the properties it has then once we are confident on the on, on that then on the top of that we started developing our own applications and today this rpa robotic process automation is extremely popular in our organization even our uh, officers who are basically not from it background they are also after getting training they are also contributed uh, contributing significantly towards uh, application development using the rpa tool the past year has been transfer transformational for iocl around more than 100 uh, high impact digital initiatives with 25 plus cutting edge analytics and 30 plus emerging technology use cases have been implemented and it it touches around more than uh, 10000 empl employees large scale change management events such as rpa hackathons we conducted 90 plus program update meetings across the departments across the corporations we have conducted 15 plus advanced trainings we have conducted to make popular this uh, technology among the masses rpa ar vr ai ml based analytics robots drones have all been accepted in jobs which was traditionally uh, done by the humans harnessing the data of ot area is always important uh, the digitalization of assets and creation of connected operational operational intelligence systems are dissolving traditional boundaries between it and operational technology management and demanding it leadership and skills across the business the convergence of it technology and ot technology this is a perennial problem for everybody this it and ot convergence and that that enable companies to compete and thrive by exploiting digital technologies to improve business performance at all points of work and in all areas of business we are also strengthening our data architecture uh, through implementation of a pan uh, ioc uh, data management platform we are in making a data management platform and uh, infosys is also engaged there in making it uh, basically this is a data lake where it ot convergence will take place and uh, this will become a foundational platform for all the data driven decision making systems even before that before this data lake is ready our m and i department m and i department is ready to ready with five six use cases the key focus area is to manage operations uh, from uh, remotely uh, by the domain experts iocl is, iocl is having a, a, a infrastructure which is critical in nature we comes under cii uh, critical Info information infrastructure so we have to safeguard it 24 7 even sending real time data to outside world uh not always possible uh, um, all the times so what we did uh, we do internal uh, assessment besides internal assessment we are doing we are uh, deploying uh, outside organizations like cdac uh, third party uh, cyber security audits etc for safety security and compliance of our it security policies so, and uh, basically we have developed many uh, high impact analytics also to name a few apc performance analytics apu performance optimization corrosion management in the pipeline area uh, intrusion uh, prediction in pipeline area uh, flare uh, monitoring tools which are the units contributing significantly to us uh, more flaring central etp and stack monitoring tools these are the different high analytics tools we have high uh, impact analytic analytics tool has been developed during this pandemic time and many of the customized uh, uh, custom tools have been procured from the market and those uh, basically these are the tools available in the market but those tools we cannot use directly in our business uh, for to use those tools in our business uh, uh, suitable customizations customizations are required we are in process of doing that customization and once that is done uh, those uh, tools will be implemented in our uh, business and we hope those will bring sea change uh, as far as operational excellence is concerned a uh, few of the tools are shutdown management tools refinery production scheduler energy management systems and integrated hsc portal from the market we have procured and that these are in process of impl implementation in our organization uh, i'll stop here thank you for listening me thank you thank you mr das uh, indeed uh, you know you had a tough job of uh, summarizing uh what iocl do, is doing in uh, in a few minutes uh, i know it is not an easy task uh i think uh, you you rightly said uh, it's a crown jewel uh, comes under the cii and uh, i think iocl's challenge is uh, twofold 
on one hand it has to handle a large uh, supply chain uh, which is a very complex supply chain and on the other hand it has to uh, also provide customers the kind of experience that they are expecting today okay so i'll request if you can stay stay on uh, now uh, i will uh, uh, invite my next speaker uh, who is mr prasoon talukdar uh, from microfocus so prasoon uh, you had the opportunity of listening to the thought leaders uh, leaders who are uh, handling massive amount of it systems in their organizations mr prashad mr devnath mr das uh, we will also listen to mr kumar a bit later uh, and you heard them talking about innovation uh, talking about scalability cloudification uh, security uh, uh, emerging tools how they are being integrated across the value chain uh, as a person who has been dealing with psus and government organizations uh, at a strategic level what are some of the thoughts that you have uh thank you uh, dr kapil dev so uh, you know i am just hearing uh, mr das mr prasad and mr devnath i think you know uh, what what we have what we are seeing uh, in the last two years maybe two and a half years i think things has changed a lot the way things used to happen and the way things are happening now uh, definitely uh, digital penetration has increased there is a increasing need to kind of you know adopt multiple technology Uh, to support employees, support the business, uh, but I'll just mention two three things which probably uh, you know our experience when we talk to government or the public sector enterprises in India. So one of the things what we have seen is that uh, there is a huge amount of burden on the IT today, IT team because of you know purely because of this pandemic has created a lot of things on online, a lot of remote stuff, a lot of things are happening. you know anywhere from any anywhere working kind of scenario so it it becomes you know important that customers are finding it challenging how to serve their employees right in terms of the it support or the enterprise support so empowering the users maybe self service is something what we are seeing in the in something the increasingly uh, customers are demanding to the especially in the public sector because public sector scale is huge compared to the you know corporates uh number of employees what you have number of um, sites number of locations what you have right so uh, you know that is one part second part is definitely uh, cyber security is a big challenge big concern because it was never such complex earlier i think the again i'm seeing the burden on cios or the it head of the organizations for them it is really really difficult to uh, you know manage the things because there are the, not only there are external threat there are internal issues They, now being a psu as you have rightly said these are the you know uh, national resources right they use it and they are the national organization so the the threat is also from the external uh, you know countries you know who are the enemy country so i think the com- situations are very difficult for them to manage so cyber security whether is the security operations being proactive being predictive is becoming becoming a necessity and we can see that most of the public sectors today are now you know going you know adopting and security operations and which are help trying to see that how uh, their infrastructure is and how it is being kind of accessed or and second part is that you know identity i'm sure that you know people are working remotely people are working from you know different places outside their offices so it is becoming important to know what is happening on the security side of it as well in terms of the identity management uh, and then what is also happening i mean uh, just now uh, you know it has been uh, mentioned by uh, you know uh, mr uh, mr mr prasad and uh, mr dibna that we need to know what we have right so you know uh, being aware of your infrastructure your applications and whether i say the inter inter it gamut whether it is a it or iot it is important that how i know that what we have and how it is performing how it is being accessed so so that that become the you know new paradigm uh, what is what is actually uh, we can see most of the customers are facing and they are actually trying to solve this problem is that you know how they know what they have and how the things to be managed so one is definitely i just mentioned that uh, security part of it second the uh, empowering the users and third is definitely i'm sure that uh, because you have a large infrastructure large applications how to manage the it it there is a necessity to Kind of implement proper IT/ITL framework, and 
where it is there in most of the organizations, but I think now organizations are going much deeper to see that how they implement that ITITL framework in a better way and even using you know, multiple other tools. I mean, uh, Mr. Das mentioned about multiple new technologies they're using. I think the similar things are there in a lot of public sector undertaking on the government and they are also trying out a lot of technologies, right? You know, today we have been talking about infrastructure management of the IT operations, but today we are talking about AI ops. So some of the things I think AI ML is something which is being used in most of the areas. I think it is being used in security, it has been IT infrastructure management and all. So I, I think this is my thoughts that, you know, some of these challenges what we see in the industry today, and this is the way um, lot, most of the customers are trying to find the solutions, uh, you know, from their side. You're on mute. Thank you, Prashun, for those uh, kind uh, few words. And uh, I think you have nicely ca captured the essence of what our leaders have been uh, talking uh, during their earlier their, during uh, the course of this uh, roundtable. And I think somewhere uh, when I and I, I really like the power of uh, collective thinking uh, because uh, it is with collective thinking that. We can understand a particular uh, topic, understand a particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, concept, because there are multiple perspectives which come together. So if I uh, put together what Mr. Prashad, uh, Mr. Devnath, and uh, Mr. Das have spoken, uh, and and then of course uh, what uh, Prasoon you have added on top of that, I think it is kind of giving us uh, a complete, uh, uh, you know, a completeness to our understanding of uh, digital PSU and government uh, organizations and smart IT. So uh, let's open it uh, uh, while Mr. Kumar has gone away for some urgent work. Uh, he will be back in a moment, uh, but let's open it for uh, Q&A. And uh, being an analyst, uh, there are uh, more questions than answers that have come to my mind. Uh, so let me pose those to our uh, leaders today here and uh, uh, who I'm sure with their vast amount of experience will be able to throw a uh, good light upon that. First is how uh, important uh, is uh, the automation uh, drive, the various tools that you use in terms of automating uh, how your IT infrastructure and applications are being managed and deployed uh, and where are you in the journey today? I mean, uh, we all understand that there is a lot of cloudification that is happening. Uh, we have to make work multiple systems together. Uh, we have to know what is happening where in the organization. So uh, if we were to kind of uh, understand um, the journey of uh, moving towards uh, an automated IT infrastructure and applications uh, I call it the smart IT paradigm. Where are we in the journey? Uh, Mr. Prashad, would we like to start with that? Yeah, sure. Uh, when we uh, uh, decided to go with uh, cloud deployment, uh, a community government community cloud for uh, uh, Indian Railways as such, we, uh, from the big, uh, day one, we decided to go with automation as far as the provisioning of the infrastructure is concerned. The provisioning of the VMs, the storage allocation, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had this, we realized automation suite uh, uh, with which we went. But soon we realized that uh, that was not enough. And uh, for example, uh, uh, one of the largest e-office application which we run for close to around 2 lakh plus uh, employees of Indian Railways. Uh, we found that uh, uh, the uh, identity and access management, that is LDAP server is hosted in NIC. And we wanted to have a secondary LDAP because the primary LDAP uh, server, the synchronization time uh, and the latencies were high, the load was high on that. So we decided to have a secondary LDAP because always we used to have some challenges. Though the portal was live, but because of failure authentication, people not able to access the application. Uh, when we did the secondary LDAP, uh, we also found that uh, uh, though we have deployed uh, additional resources for that, but the synchronization time was 24 hours. That is every 24 hours, uh, the updates will happen. So if any user has changed password, uh, he will not be able to 
get authenticated against the secondary LDAP. So this this was a application or LDAP was designed with with uh, something in mind that okay the bandwidth is expensive, the replication time is very high, but with uh, the telecom bandwidth, uh, uh, you we all know that how the internet is working and the cloud services have started and the bandwidth of 100G, 10G, 100G. We're talking about earlier we talk about uh, 10 Mbps, 100 Mbps, 1G. Now we talk about 10G, 40G uh, bandwidth and 100G bandwidth. So what we did is uh, uh, because when the uh, primary LDAP server failed, then we have to basically edit each of those some 20 instances of the servers to have to start communicating with the new LDAP, and this was to be done manually. So we had around uh, 100 VMs, and doing it manually each taking five minutes, so five to 100, so 500 minutes it takes to really just change that primary LDAP. Uh, uh, IP address with the secondary LDAP IP address. So th that was the time when we uh, thought that we have to, this is a, one uh, problem which we are seeing, but then uh, continuously updating the patches, uh, especially for the app, the operating system, the application, the security patches also was extremely important for us. So we went with uh, another uh, automation solution, which is uh, from Ansible Tower we deployed. And through Ansible Tower, which was something uh, the task which I was telling the problem of LDAP replacing with the primary secondary in the parameter file was just a matter of few minutes. So across all the 100 instances or 100 servers, we were able to uh, change it within uh, a minute or so. So the user, were, they never had any downtime or any, uh, even they didn't realize any problem, if any problem comes with the NIC LDAP system, we were uh, still able to uh, handle all the eventualities and uh, we are able to give almost 99.949 of uh, reliability as for the application concern. First of all, the infrastructure is, is a scalable infrastructure mm. with a cloud layer across multiple availability zones. Second is on the application itself, we have tried to ensure that we are able to get 99.99. Mm. So it is not only the infrastructure which usually people commit that it is 99.9 or 95, whatever, but on the application side also, we are able to achieve a very high reliability. Uh, so automation is extremely important uh, because when you are looking at a large scale or uh, scaling up things, you playbooks, writing playbooks and using an automation engine, like for example, we have used a sensible uh, tower. There are other uh, tools also for configuration management data and uh, carrying out automation for even taking backups, for example, you can automate uh, backups for uh, taking the configuration file of, let us say your core router. You do backup for the application, but uh, configuration file backups for the firewall, for example, suppose the firewall um, fails and you want to basically uh, install another firewall or, or basically replace the hardware and then again, uh, try to bring it faster. It's important to have all the backups of the configuration file for all these devices. So we have written a lot of script, a lot of uh, playbooks to automate a lot of tasks in our data center. Great, great. So uh, moving on to Mr. Devnath, uh, same question. Uh, where where uh, is your organization in its journey towards automating? Uh, unlike, uh, yeah, good question for a, um, a large organization like Railways where automation plays a very key role. But uh, the difference from a, a pure I, ICT service provider like uh, Railtel, uh, Railways is a majorly transport service provider. So uh, the IT based automation can only be a service to the main, uh, you know, product, which is transportation of uh, goods and passengers. So yeah. whatever automation is happening at the front end. It, wherever the IT or the digital uh, tools are able to help, that uh, we can, uh, you know, help automate. Uh, something like I uh, will take an example of uh, the booking of uh, goods uh, or rates and then moving it and uh, disseminating it to the customers. Uh, the freight operation information system tries to automate that uh, that process from books and uh, paper-based uh, you know, records 
now it is all uh, based on a uh, digital system where everything is calculated automatically the uh, time has uh, shortened a lot and uh, even now even payment is uh, sometimes done automatically through um, electronic way bridges similarly on the passenger side we have the passenger reservation system or the web ticketing systems which are uh, somehow automating the window based ticketing system and even taken a leap forward and they are providing it on over the web to the end user but again uh, uh, there are a certain pitfalls to this automation also uh, because too much dependence on the digital system has uh, somehow in my uh, personal experience somehow it has uh, uh, removed uh, or almost uh, you know uh, taken away the uh, manual uh, process knowledge of the uh, people at the in the field so sometimes when there are issues with the network or with the uh, digital systems going down then uh, there are no manual backups and uh, there are no manual processes to take them over we are having uh, uh, you know playbooks and uh, processes to how to uh, respond to an incident and uh, continue the business but most of the time because of the lack of knowledge or the change of people or the lack of uh, you know tools to like the books the fair books fair tables at on the sites those uh, business process uh, continuation uh, theories <laughs> do not translate into uh, actual actions and uh, then the customer is uh, slightly inconvenienced in those times so i feel that uh, the automation uh, in a, a, a supportive role uh, like what it or the digital is for a, a, a larger service of transportation should be in such a way that there is uh, there are alternatives uh, available both at the digital side which means the network the uh, systems the dr the backup etc etc but there should be also enough human resource uh, uh, training and uh, awareness backup available so that in case of uh, you know natural disruptions or because of some disaster somewhere in some part of the country uh, the local people or local employees are able to support the customer our you know annadata uh, uh, or my bab uh, we are able to retain them and not put them to in convenience so that uh, uh, they run away to alternative modes of uh, transportation so i think it is uh, good to uh, automate things and uh, in the digital way but then we have to also uh, be very cautious and uh, mindful of the alternatives both in terms of technology as well as as in terms of human uh, resource uh, awareness and uh, training for those jobs thank you thank you thank you uh, mr devnath you have given a very nice perspective to a rather complex subject and uh, thank you so much for that and i understand that um, there is a huge overhaul that is happening in the indian railways in terms of uh, their it systems and uh, converging them together for a better play uh, thank you so much mr das would you like to add on uh, though you talked about uh, the tools and uh, uh, you know yes yes uh, yeah Yes, basically, as I said earlier, also, ki, uh, I would like to mention again that uh, as far as this automation is concerned, we have uh, procured this automation anywhere robotics pro robotic process automation tool uh, from automation anywhere, and just uh, seven eight eight months back, and uh, in these seven eight months, uh, we made it popular among our young engineers. and we have developed not not less than 50 use cases using robotic process automations basically this is useful in the area where where the processes are mostly rule based formula based and repetitive steps are there so 
basically huge uh, amount of manpower man hours have been saved by by the by utilizing this uh, robotic process automation and most importantly uh, we could make it popular among among our engineers and they have come forward to uh, identify the new new cases and they are developing the solutions of their own uh, that is what is very important and uh, number two we have earned the faith of uh, our business people and they are coming forward to uh, digitalize their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, processes in terms of uh, robotic process automations that is what uh, we have significantly improved and uh, besides this ro robotic process automation we have uh, uh, significantly progress towards uh, uh, anal analytics development, deploying uh, machine learning based assisted analytics of OT data has a lot of potential in drawing benefits of business in terms of predictive maintenance, efficient asset utilization, efficiency improvement in process units, yield improvement, etc. However, it is equally challenging from the cyber security point of view also. We all know about the recent breach of security in a pipeline system in US. In, in, in just few days back, we needed to take sufficient safeguards in cybersecurity so that we could develop and deploy these initiatives through OEMs as well as uh, in-house. Great. That's my submission. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Das. So uh, I would love to carry on for maybe another couple of hours, but I, I respect your time limits and we had said we will close it by four. Mr. Prashad also has a, a, a hard stop. Uh, so I will request my friend Prasoon to uh, kind of uh, quickly share with us uh, as to how Microfocus can help uh, uh, PSUs and digital organizations in terms of their journey uh, on IT uh, and IT infrastructure and applications automation. After this, oh, that, this we will close. Thanks, thanks, Dr. Kapil. So maybe I can uh, take the clue from this automation part of it. Uh, uh, you know, automation, I think, is 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 probably being used in uh, you know various areas to improve the efficiency, right? It was the primary, the operational efficiency, and uh, what we what we are we have seen or we are seeing in the industry, including public sector undertaking, is that one way of uh, using automation is basically the workflow automation, and other one is the process automation. These two areas we can see and uh, how it is actually benefiting customers one definitely mr das has mentioned about it uh, they are using uh, robotic process automation and a lot of benefits are definitely coming to improve the efficiency removing the repeated demanding jobs but i think uh, there are two three important aspects which is coming into that you know wherever you have multiple applications and wherever you have a legacy applications right and you know when you want to create a workflow automation into that uh, you know either you have to go for some kind of new application development, but you want to avoid that. I think that is one area where, you know, RP or the automation is being used. And some other places also we have seen is that orchestration and automation is being used together by which you can do kind of low code or no code uh, kind of uh, workflow you are creating, creating more automation into that. That is one part. Second part, what we have seen is that uh, even in the service management where you are actually serving your users or the customers within the organization, giving the, you know, not only the IT service, but also the enterprise services through IT, uh, that is where we also see a lot of automation uh, is happening because you, you do not have too many people to serve customers' complaints or the different calls which is coming to you on your service desk, right? So you actually can use automation by actually responding to all this kind of customer escalation or the user escalation level or level to at a software level itself creating a process right or creating your own process into the through automation and rest of the things can come to level three and level four to the experts to you know take certain decisions same goes into cyber security as well as the you know uh, security operations we see the security operations today you have lakhs of events happening in, in a day or thousands of event, events happening in a day it is not you know, humongous things not possible to respond by your, you know, staff, IT staff, or by your vendors or the solution provided to handle everything. So, again, the automation and orchestration also is being used in, you know, security side of it as well. So, this is one part of it. Uh, what the automation, you know, uh, how how we are also helping a lot of customers into that with our, you know, uh, on the security side, there's something called SOAR, or you also have something called uh, user behavior analytics, which is a AI ML 
stuff which is you are using actually to respond to or proactively doing a lot of protection of your infrastructure of your applications uh, you know not only the users but also to the entities right because you do not know from where somebody is working even the threat can happen internally so you know then you are also using this kind of technology to manage your identity as well so that is the second part of it third part i'll just mention probably as you know somebody in this panelist uh, mentioned about that deep sec ops right because you are also you know trying to adapt to make your organization agile for your applications which is going running or the application which is being developed or to be to be rolled out now what why what micro focus can help in this space as well because we help customer on doing creating those devops framework helping customer also to do lot of testing which actually starting from the enter is dlc life cycle starting from the development to roll out whether it is a functional or it is a load testing or it is a security testing as well so these are the areas where uh, we can we are helping lot of our customers third definitely you know, uh, whenever you are doing uh, your it operations as you have mentioned that lot of cloudification is happening because for public sector enterprise it is hybrid right because you have many things on cloud but mostly things are on premise i'm sure going forward you will be adopting lot more cloud for your different applications so now knowing what you have in your on premise is easier but what you have in cloud is difficult and it is become become even more difficult when you have combinations how do you know what you have in cloud as well as on premise so it is it is important that you need to have tools or something some software which will help you to seamlessly see what you have across the enterprise and then you decide not only application but infrastructure a whole lot of new things coming up so you need to have something very matured platform which can help you to do lot of things automatic or autonomous way and that is what i think you know with our experience of more than 40 years of experience in helping customer to it operations management in cyber security in data protection and many other areas or the application development uh, you know uh, testing software automation and stuff like that definitely we can uh, we can help you in multiple you know different domains i uh, would be really happy because we have uh, you know our uh, center of excellence demo center which nowadays in last two years we have made it accessible online and you actually can go and see a lot of use cases and 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 see that how it is it is useful for you even we can create customized use cases as well for you know your kind of environment to be created because your software and it is in a system so it can be done so this is in our internal cloud which we host all those things we'll be really happy to talk to you individually understand few things maybe pick up few use cases create it and you know see that how we can help your organizations in your journey of digital transformation thank you thank you prasoon that was really really very very short sweet and insightful uh so uh, respecting your time limits uh, i will officially close this uh, discussion uh, though mr sanjay kumar uh, had to go so we will continue with him for some more time so prasoon sanjay and uh, kostav i'll request if you can stay on uh, mr prashad mr devnath and mr das a very big thank you to you for your time and uh, i'm really really grateful that you could take time out of your busy schedule uh just uh, before closing uh, not only do i thank you on behalf of coyo sage and micro focus i think uh, the threads uh, that you uh, have um, uh, opened here in this uh, round table can be taken forward by having conversation directly with micro focus and uh, micro focus prosoon you can also Uh, uh, connect with mr mr prashad mr devnath and mr das and uh, continue with your discussion as to how you can help them in uh, their journey how can you partner with them uh, with your permission sir i will share your email and uh, mobile number with uh, prasoon so that he can uh, direct, directly uh, get in touch with you yes mr kumar uh, sorry uh, we since, since you joined at a point when we were about to complete and mr prashad also had to go so we thought uh, we will continue with this so maybe you you can take a couple of minutes and share your thoughts uh, mr sanjay kumar is from chris and he heads uh, the uh, freight operation in, uh, information system fys uh, at chris yes mr kumar over to you uh, uh, thanks mr singh uh, for introducing and uh, uh, good afternoon everyone rather few of them have has already have already left 
so i am uh, glad to be part of this discussion so as most of dignitaries dignitaries have spoken about their viewpoint and specifically mr devnath he is from my organization only has already briefed about our organization so uh, rather i would like to focus on the practical things that i have adopted in my job profile actually the project that i am leading uh, i am leading a project that deals with the commercial activities of good services so uh, we have large number of corporates that are registered with railways for transportation of goods uh, like ntpc sale and of course indian oil one our one of our esteemed customers uh, they are also one of our customers and that are registered with us for transportation of goods and earlier we used to have only uh, traditional methods of payments for payment of uh, customers dues like payment of freight they used to pay through check dd uh, and other traditional modes but however presently we have tied up with number of banks wherein uh, customers can sign a tripartite agreement with railways as well as bank and make payment of their dues seamlessly there is no ma uh, manual intervention at all so uh, this is running very smoothly and moreover uh, very recently we have tied up with sbi for their payment uh, for their payment gateway and it introduced online payment system with options like uh, credit card debit card internet banking and upa uh, whatever is there in the trend so uh, moreover we are uh, in process to introduce uh, like chat box and other latest trends uh, that are there in the market and are focusing on customer needs uh, and keeping his requirement on priority uh, we are trying to improve our efficiency to the maximum this is what we are focusing at present and uh, <coughs> keeping pace with the technology we are always open to the new things so that being a it organization we should always be in competition and at par with the latest trends so this is what my submission is uh, practical what we are doing right now okay great thank you so uh, what are some of the new initiatives uh, that are uh, being undertaken at ministry of railways Uh, see, uh, there are uh, new uh, projects that are in pipeline, and some are coming uh, right now, going also. Uh, as I have told, that we have recently introduced online payment system. We used to get many complaints because I am dealing with the goods services only. I am talking okay. about freight okay. services, so uh, we didn't have had that uh, uh, latest trend in our projects. as compared to that are there in the uh, passenger segment mm. so now uh, we have uh, we used to get uh, request from big players big customers that we they should uh, they don't have to go to the goods shed or the railway terminal to book their uh, consignment from anywhere to anywhere in india so now re very recently we have in the last week itself we have uh, introduced Uh, they have to put a demand for their con uh, consignments to be delivered from one place to another so we have recently they don't ha now they don't have to fill a form or uh, they don't have to do go physically or send their uh, person to any of the goods shed for uh, all the formalities we have already digitized it and everything they have, they can do uh, from the comfort of their laptop or sitting in, in their office here. so uh, other things are also there in pipeline like way bridges uh, the train when the moment the train crosses the uh, particular uh, area of that station the uh, gadgets are there in the track itself they are installed on the track itself that they they measure the weight of the wagon in a moment and that gets captured in the system automatically on their own so there is no manual feeding and nothing uh, like that is there so these are few of the endeavors we are into it and so there is a lot of data that gets generated at the edges and it exactly. travels back and forth exactly. uh, with the center with the query. very right so, very right okay great great so prasun you any specific question or perspective you have uh, on what mr kumar said yeah so uh, 
thank you mr kumar i think giving a good insight about uh, the new things that you have yeah, i'm you sure welcome. that you know foice is a uh, exactly. you know is a very old application and it has been there for many many years you know i i am coming from a cmc background and then i uh, okay, you know i was okay, in right. ibm hp now in microfocus right, so, right, right. Uh, i mean the you know you were the now you know first uh, organization to started true sense yes, governance yes. with the passenger reservation system and yeah. files followed that right after that files came in so uh, a bit of background i have but i'm sure yeah, it started way are... back in 1986 actually correct correct right yeah and i'm sure a so, lot of modernization would have happened since absolutely. then absolutely yeah yeah exactly yeah. but there are there is always scope of all uh, these things like latest trend and new technologies are always welcome and we are working great. towards that that only great no, absolutely great. absolutely so maybe i just i just want to when I, without without knowing the full things what you have currently what i have heard from you uh, just couple of things uh, just to see that whether we can help you in your you know uh, upcoming uh, journey that what you have uh, see one of the things is uh, where you have this legacy applications you are modernizing exactly it. you are adding new modules you are adding permit payment right, modules right. and stuff like that now uh, one is definitely you know i mean we have discussed about automation just before uh, just when you were joined rejoined so uh, i'm sure that you know, rpa is something which is being used by many organizations to solve certain automation problems but yes. uh, what i'm trying to just put in in front of you as a thought is that rpa is one part of it but there are many applications that doesn't work with rpa or or maybe you know rpa can be used not only for mundane repetitive uh, jobs but it is also being used where you have a legacy application there is no api proper api still you want to do some kind of automation without writing too much of codes right okay. because when you writing codes is another project so you don't want to do that so just look at you know rpa with a combination of maybe you know ocr optical character recognition technologies together along with the service management so we have few use cases we have uh, we have solved some of the problems of some of the customers uh, yes. that may be different from yours i'm not saying that can be the same solution for you but what we i'm just giving a thoughts if you are interested we can show you some some demonstration of you know uh, similar things and then you can probably give your ideas and we can see how we can make it customized for you and it is making sense to you uh, more than that and whether it is really helping you to you know uh, reduce your manual intervention further uh, you know making the efficiency more in terms of this whole whole you know, workflow uh, saving the time and finally making your customers happy right that is one part of it yes. uh, second part of it probably is that when you have these applications and application is rolled out and probably you start facing issues when it scales right when a lot of other users access it right so so a lot of api tests so application testing functional testing we do it right but okay. there's a lot of api testing which is becoming important one number one number two your app application may be accessed by not only by laptop but by the tab or mobile or different exactly. operating or mobile operating system so yes you know then your application is to be tested with those you know environment as well right and a lot yeah, of other right. interface so we have a lot of uh, you know intelligent or proven software testing tools which help customer okay. do the api testing mobile testing even we can create the service virtualization like even if we do not have this payment gateways even if you do not have those interface physically present when you are developing the applications you can create uh, you know simulate those services and then okay. test it at the developer itself so developer okay. doesn't need to go and access sbi system and stuff like that you can create recreate those environment and that can be your test bed anybody can go and use it and we 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 have those pretty advanced tools it has been used by no, income no. tax i understand but if i could interrupt here yeah. so uh, as far as uh, what you have told me that uh, you have number of tools which can test uh, the applications with different scenarios and different aspects right so uh, because we have two uh, kind of uh, applications one is legacy application which is running in visual basic right now that is uh, from the uh, the core applications and another is web application which are already part of the web technology so uh, do you have tools for uh, legacy applications also which can uh, judge judge the application from different aspects and uh, tell us the results for concurrent users and the load which uh, which is required 
uh, for servers and uh, optimized optimization can be done for legacy application i am specifically asking yes we have tools for the legacy applications but as you know when you say that legacy we need to also check few lot of right. things in terms of the support if there is a exactly. support out of the box if there is lack of support you need to you know do you know develop certain protocols and all so yes sure, that is, sure. tools are there pretty mature 20 25 years these have been in the industry today you have probably heard about load runner you have yes, yes, yes. This is our, exactly this yeah. is our, our, our i am well aware about it yes, right. yes so i am just given one example there are a lot right, more right, came right. up recent times even recent times we are using ai ml itself into testing as well right. because you have a test script for one application and same script you can reuse with some bit yeah. of you know change and also I, i'm saying that maybe you give a time maybe i, I can send my uh, expert to go and visit yes. you in fact i don't know i mean which department but the same team of uh, testing uh, software team they are yes. talking to a couple of other uh, departments of crease i know but i okay. don't know which team but i can ask uh, yeah yeah if you could if you could team. give me a reference so that i could have an idea how it is going at there and so that we can adapt at our and also if it is going very well sure so sure. Uh, i'll get in touch with you i'll go through it and uh, no uh, no problem i'll get in touch with you as and when required sure absolutely we will be very happy we will be happy to share more information whenever you want sure great thank great. you great. thank you sanjay ji and uh, i think uh, my association with chris team has been quite old uh, yes yes i've yes. been regularly in touch with mr mathur uh, exactly mr so mathur yes i'm and, and i think you have also been part of uh, some of uh, the events that we have organized right 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 yeah and i and, have yes. yeah and and i'm so happy that i could connect with mr devnath also today uh, yes I yes a lot yes. about him and yes, yes. i think uh, uh, i've been trying to get in touch with him finally okay. it happened today so i'm so happy thank you so much for your time mr kumar and uh, we will stay in touch yes thank you thanks a lot yeah thank, thank you, you so very much thanks yeah, thank you